Rolle's theorem is one of the first theorems that we learned that actually uses derivatives to tell us something about a function. <clears throat> In the previous chapter, we were studying derivatives, but more uh, like the rules of how to take a derivative. We learned the product rule and the quotient rule and the chain rule and the power rule and all these rules, and it was more algebraic in nature. But um, but here we're going to start learning like what can derivatives tell us, and, and Rolle's theorem is a good kind of introductory theorem. Uh, this is pretty easy to understand that lets us use derivatives to to say something about a function. So, anyways, here's what it says, and uh, let me read it, and then I'll, I'll kind of explain it in more plain English. It says if your function is continuous, which we remember what that means, it means there's no breaks in it or holes or asymptotes, um, but you can draw it smoothly without picking up your pencil um, on a closed interval a to b, and it's differentiable on the open interval a to b, and I'll, I'll explain what's the difference between open and closed and why it has to be that way, but for now just remember that uh, differentiable is more or less another word for smooth. There's no uh, abrupt changes in the function, no corners or cusps or sharp edges, but it's continuous on the closed interval, differentiable or smooth on the open interval a to b, and f of a matches f of b, which means the y value at the beginning matches the y value at the end. So uh, if you want to uh, try this with me, your your graph does not have to look at, at all like mine. We can all choose different graphs and you'll see how Rolle's theorem applies to your graph. But um, just draw you uh, two axes. Here's A, here's B. Um, I'll just put a y value, let's say here. And based off of this condition, f of A equaling f of B, I know this has to also be here. They have to have the same height. And then I'm going to draw something without picking up my pencil um, between A and B, and we can all do something different. Um, I'll simply do this, um, up, down, up, down, or whatever. Um, that's fine. Uh, it, notice it's smooth, so that means it's differentiable and it's continuous because there are no breaks in the graph. So I've satisfied the three conditions for Rolle's theorem. And then here's the result. Here's what Rolle's theorem says. It says, then there exists somebody, some x value, in the interval a to b, that's a math symbol that means it is in the set, um, or in the interval from a to b, uh, such that something happens. Well, what happens is if your beginning point and ending point have the, the same height, then there's somebody in this interval who should have a derivative of zero, right? Because the average rate of change between the beginning and end is zero. So uh, if you go up, you've heard often what, what goes up must come down. If it has to come back down, then there's got to be some point either at a peak or a valley uh, whose derivative there will be zero. And that's the result of Rolle's theorem. Okay, um, you can kind of see why that would be the case. Um, to, to help maybe further explain this, let me show you a few quickie examples of uh, ways Rolle's theorem applies or doesn't apply. All right, so in an example like this, Rolle's theorem would apply just by looking at the function f of a matches f of b is continuous and there's no sharp edges or, or cusps or things like that. It's very smooth. So sure enough, if you look, scan the function, uh, you have a place like here and here and here and here. But the fact is there's at least one place. Here there's four, but there's at least one place where the derivative would be zero. Okay, now let's look at some ways that Rolle's theorem may not apply. Okay, um, here's an example. Uh, it's continuous is differentiable, but, but what failed as far as Rolle's theorem is concerned? Why is Rolle's theorem not applicable? Well, f of a does not match f of b, and sure enough, you can tell just by looking at the graph, there is nowhere that has a derivative that's zero, right? Because not all the conditions for, for Rolle's theorem applied. Um, so we're not guaranteed that, that sort of place. Okay, um, here again, Rolle's theorem doesn't apply. How come, why not? Well, f of a does equal f of b. Uh, it is continuous. Um, there's no breaks in the in the graph or anything like that. But do you see why it's not applicable here? Well, uh, right here, um, in the open interval a to b is not differentiable. There's that sharp corner. So you can see that would have been the place if it was smooth. 
that would have been the place where the derivative is zero, but because that was a corner, instead, there is no such place. Rolle's theorem is not applicable. Okay, last case. Um, here, f of a is equal to f of b. Um, but we can see right here in the middle, it's not continuous, unfortunately, which um, will make there not be a place where the derivative is zero. But if all three of those conditions uh, apply, um, continuous, differentiable, and the endpoints have the same height, there will be at least one C value such that the derivative equals zero. Okay, just real quick in closing, uh, I always wondered this as a student, what was the deal between close versus open and, and all those sorts of things? Um, basically, we are trying to say the entire interval is continuous and differentiable. You just have a small issue of differentiability at, uh, at endpoints. Um, and it actually traces back all the way back to the limit definition of differentiability. If you recall a long time ago, the limit is h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h with that difference quotient. Um, see, you can't approach, um, you know, if, if this is your x value, you can't approach that point from both sides because there's nobody over here, you know. So um, I don't, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail for that. So in any way, just to exclude the differentiability of the endpoints, we just say open interval instead. Um, however, it can obviously be continuous on the closed interval, but we exclude the endpoints just simply when we're talking about differentiability. Okay, now I have not actually done an, a, a very mm, uh, typical example of what you'll usually be asked. Typically you'll be given a function and if it's dealing with Rolle's theorem and they'll say either show Rolle's theorem applies which means we have to show us continuous, differentiable, and the y values match and then they'll say something along the lines of if Rolle's theorem is applicable what is the value C that satisfies Rolle's theorem? Where, where is this place where the derivative would be zero? Um, I'll tell you what I'll do though. I'm going to do an example and you can click um, the next video to watch this example. But if you want to practice it before you watch it, here's, here's what the example is going to be. Show Rolle's theorem applies and find the C value that satisfies Rolle's theorem for this function right here. So if you want to go ahead and try this, you're welcome to do so, and I'll give the solution for that um, in the very next video.